Happy Friday. Welcome into Payoff Pitch Action Network's MLB betting podcast. Brendan Glasheen joined today by BJ Cunningham and Charlie Disturco. We are running through the 15 game slate on this Friday, July 28th. Payoff Pitch is three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. During the baseball season, please rate, review, and subscribe if you have not done so already. Greatly appreciate you all stopping by the show. We are presented by BetMGM. Let's just dive right in. We've got a lot to get to here in a short amount of time. BJ, so many games. Mm -hmm. Slate sucked Thursday. Small slate yesterday. It was weird. I was like, whoa, really? Only like five games? And it was really smelly. Um, But a lot to work with, I think, for tonight. Mm -hmm. What do we like for a best bet on this Friday? Yeah, I'm going to go late night. I like the Mariners at minus 130 against the Diamondbacks. Logan Gilbert is going to be on the mound. He's having a pretty good season. 3.57 expected ERA. He's kept a really, really low walk per nine rate at 1.8. And he has two fantastic out pitches, a slider and a curveball. Both pitches are producing a whiff rate over 30% and both have a stuff plus rating over 110 this season. And those two pitches make him really effective against left-handed hitters as his XFIP is about a half run lower against lefties than it is against righties, which is good because the Diamondbacks likely will be throwing four to five left-handed hitters in their lineup against him tonight. He'll be going against Tommy Henry, who I believe I mentioned on the show last time I was on the show, but he's a soft tossing lefty pitch to contact type pitcher. Very, very low K per nine, rate. Actually a decently high walk per nine rate at 3.7. You know, he only averages 91 miles per hour on his fastball. He throws it close to 50% of the time and opposing hitters have a 404 expected weighted on base average against it. And the stuff plus on that pitch is only 72. He is very good at inducing weak contact, but then you deep dig deeper into his average exit velocity allowed and his barrel rate allowed. Those are a lot lower than his hard hit rate allowed. He got hit hard in his last two starts against the Blue Jays and the Reds, who are better offenses than he'll be facing with the Mariners, who are average against lefties. But the biggest part of this, Brandon, is the Mariners have one of the best bullpens in Major League Baseball. They're number one in XFIP. They're fourth in K-to-walk ratio. They have the third best hard hit rate allowed, and they're also top five in pitching plus, while the Diamondbacks are a very average bullpen. So uh, I like the Mariners at minus 130. I'm projecting them at minus 162. So I think there's some decent value on them. All right. Very good. Mariners tonight, they start. Uh, it's, it's, it's a BJ pick after dark tonight. They mm-hmm. start uh, at eight. No, that's tomorrow night. Looking at tonight, they are starting at 940 in Arizona. Charlie, how you doing? How you feeling? You all right? You know? Yeah, it's a Friday. So, uh, you know, just excited for the weekend and uh, an actual good slate today. So fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, you sound really convinced. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you like tonight, Charles, to get to get the, the train back on the tracks? Yes. Uh, San Diego money line. Padres are taking on the Texas Rangers. It's Dane Dunning against Joe Musgrove. And this is just a pitching la- matchup that I love to attack here. If you look at Dane Dunning. He's got a 318 actual ERA, but his expected metrics are about a run and a half to two runs higher. He's got a five expected ERA and a 15% strikeout rate. So he's pitching to contact, not getting as many strikeouts as he did in years past, but has really benefited from a low BABIP and timely ground balls. That's kind of kept him out of harm's way. He's been able to mitigate damage that way. But it's just a perfect matchup here against a San Diego team that likes to take pitches. They don't swing and miss that much. He's in the bottom 5% in all pitchers of whiff rate, and he's below average in just about every metric. So when you look at his numbers, it's just negative regression on the horizon for Dunning. We saw it against the Dodgers where they were able to club him over a short span. I think the same is going to be here against Padres. And then you look at Joe Musgrove, and this Texas lineup's still great without Corey Seager, but Seager is a loss here. And Musgrove has been quietly dominant. Blake Snell has been getting all of the love. He's been, you know, rising up the the Cy Young rankings and stuff like that. But Musgrove, in the last 30 days, he's 11th in stuff plus. His expected ERA is 311. He gives up hard hits less than a third of the time when balls are put into play. Shored up on his bail rate from last season. It what he's done is is pretty impressive, and it really has not been discussed enough. Uh, Obviously. There's some concern with the Padres bullpen blowing leads from time to time, but Texas's bullpen is also not much, not anything to you know gawk at. So I like the Padres here minus 159 on the money line, and I back that up to like minus 170, 175. Okay, you know the uh, Rangers are coming off that grueling series against Houston too. A lot of runs, a lot of bullpen use. 
So they're not coming in fully rested yeah. as a pen. They didn't get great pitching. That was just just shootouts. The that whole series against Houston. And a very uh, quick, emotional and a very emotional win that last game where the bench is yeah. cleared. They were, you know, they hit Jordan, then Framber hit Simeon. So, you know, a very emotional game to then have a day off, try and recompose and face the Padres who are in panic mode and like need they're going to win the, the Texas pretty much safely inside that playoff burst. Quickly, the price keeps moving. I know you're taking a, a favorite here. Padres are minus 165 at BetMGM. Do you have a target price in mind? Like where you say, uh, okay, probably, you draw the line here. I'd probably cut it off around 170, 175. Or if you want to parlay that with another team that I'll get into later with the Dodgers, uh, just two heavier favorites that I think have a pretty significant edge uh, pitching wise. Okay, let's find out if we're going to fade the public on Friday. The Boston Red Sox, BJ, they've won four in a row. They're playing <laughs> well. They just beat the Braves twice, probably win of the year on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Win of the year for the Red Sox coming from behind <laughs> late. Tata Crawford on the mound tonight for Boston. There's my Boston coming out for you, people. Mm -hmm. Cutter, Cutter Crawford is on the mound tonight for the Red Sox. And he opposes Logan Webb. Red Sox getting 84% of the bets, 99% of the cash on Boston. They are a dog tonight at San Fran to start this series over the weekend bj are you backing the red Sox as a dog and riding with the people no i mean i have the giants no at minus 132 so uh Coward. I, trust my, I trust my numbers here the thing about okay. cutter crawford is he's you know he's slightly better as a starter than he was as a reliever you know 4.16 x fip his expected era is only slightly above what logan webb is and i mean logan webb is a a very good ground ball pitcher. You know, he's got a very low walk per nine. Right? He's a very difficult pitcher to face. So the Red Sox lineup has been hitting the ball very well. They're obviously very good against right-handed pitching, but uh, I'm not projecting much value on this game. So I'm going to have to pass. Is that hard for you to do? No, it's not <laughs> that hard to do. If the Red Sox win, I'll be happy. It's okay. All right. All right. It's it's weird. This team, they, they lose two out of three to Oakland, and then they just, they, they, they really are right back in taking two out of three from the Mets, and then they take two from Atlanta. <laughs> Charlie, you are a cutta believer. Why? I, I am. Uh, taking two out of three from the Mets is not impressive, though, Brendan. Uh, right. I am on the Red Sox over the first five here. Uh, obviously, the bullpen has been incredible the last 30 days for the Red Sox, but that's just something I don't want to get into, especially with the Giants, because their back end is excellent as well. But I think that this pitching matchup is not that different than – uh, everyone's t discussing and what the numbers say. I got first five at plus 140. I'd still back it down at the number right now, around 125. Cutter Crawford actually has a better stuff plus and pitching plus than Logan Webb. Uh, and that's come, obviously, with him being in the bullpen and now a starter. But he's taken tremendous strides. And if you want to read more about how much and how better he's been as of late, look at Anthony DeBundo's column on pitchers that he's looking to buy in the second half of the season. But when you look at everything, they're pretty comparable pitchers. Uh, you know, it, it, 354 expected ERA for Webb, 375 for Crawford. So these are two pitchers that I hot hold in similar regard. Webb, his biggest issue is he gives up a lot of hard contact and a lot of barrels. Cutter Crawford has been able to mitigate that. And across the board, if you just look at him, his control is elite. His chase rate is also elite. So he's, he's inducing self-contact. He's doing everything that you need to as a starting pitcher. So... I have this number closer to plus 110, 115. So I'm happy to take the plus 140. I'd still take it at 125, but I wouldn't, I would shy away from the full game. I know others are on the full game just because that, that bullpen gets tricky from time to time. First five money line has come down to plus 110 at bet MGM. Keep that in mind. Very nice of you to plug our colleague, Anthony DeBundo and do so uh, with so much conviction. BJ, you could learn a lesson or two from that. <laughs> No, I don't think I really could. I mean, we'll, we'll get to it later. One of Anthony DeBundo's losers is on the mound tonight. <laughs> well, you one know, of his you, winners is on the mound tonight, too, when he plays for your Boston Red Sox. Yeah. You know that, like, Wonder Goal, the Wonder Goal podcast, Action Network soccer betting podcast, you know that's going on at the same time when BJ just likes to rip DeBundo because there's just too much DeBundo. Yeah, I mean, hey, tune in, uh, I believe, next week or the week after for our season preview. Great. And great DeBundo will do great there, too. We'll do wonderful you've, there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mo moving on. So the Red Sox, Charlie likes first five. BJ is staying away. 
Red Sox getting a lot of love tonight. They are rolling coming into the series in San Francisco. Underdogs, BJ, this spot is interesting for mm-hmm. a lot of reasons. It is. Kevin Gosman on the mound for the Blue Jays. I know a lot of us, a lot of folks, I'm not going to throw myself in there. I didn't do it, but Blue Jays love during the break. Blue Jays futures, Blue Jays World Series, and they came off, they're coming off a nice win against the Dodgers. They're back at home taking on the Angels. And they just acquired Lucas Giolito from the White Sox. The Angels are buying. Shohei Otani is happy. They're buying. Otani throws a gem against the Tigers. Uh, they had the doubleheader yesterday. Then he hits a couple home runs. Guy's a beast. Guy is a god out there. And the Angels are rather significant underdogs tonight against Kevin Gosman. They're sending Giolito to the mound. His first start as an Angel. Why are you backing Los Angeles? It's the price here, Brennan, which I think yeah. is a little too high on the Blue Jays and Gossman. I mean, Giolito, I mean, he's been average this season, 4.44 yep. expected ERA. He's not, he's nothing special. And, you know, <laughs> the trade they did for him uh, was a little one-sided, let's say, uh, for the White Sox, but that's okay. Uh, but Giolito pitching plus 102 this season. He's been a little above average. He's been on point with his location. His slider has really improved this season. He's been very effective with it, allowing under a 300 expected weight on base average, producing over a 37% whiff rate with a stuff plus rating of 107. And what he's doing a good job of is, you know, his fastball is very average and he's kind of reeled back and not throwing his fastball as much. And he's throwing a slider about 7% more this season than he was last season. So throwing your more effective pitches is always a good sign of improvement. Kevin Gosman. I mean, he's a pitcher I love. I've loved for a very, very long time. If you even go back to the original payoff pitch show, I've been touting, I've been loving on Kevin Gosman. He's been, he's been good this season. I mean, 3.6 expected ERA. He's uh, his average exit velocity allowed and hard hit rate allowed or, or a tad concerning at this point. And what he kind of struggles with uh, he kind of struggles to get lefties out. He's got this, uh, you know, amazing splitter that goes in on righties, but it kind of goes away on lefties and lefties hit him a little bit harder. 3.7 X FIP against lefties, 2.4 X FIP against righties. The angels have the ability to throw six left-handed bats at him, including the best left left-handed bat in all of baseball. So in terms of a price point, and I have the angels projected at plus 159, the best price you can find out there is plus 175. I would not go below plus 175 on this price. It has come down a little bit. The Angels did open around plus 190 and have kind of been bet down to plus 175. So that's my cutoff point right there. But this is simply just a little bit of a projection edge here on the Angels who I don't think have this like significant gap in terms of, you know, offensive splits between them and the Blue Jays in this game. I think several books have taken down playoff odds just to make or miss the playoffs, mostly make. Most of the markets available just make the playoffs, but uh, really, really quick, quick 30 seconds here. Do you, do you buy the Angels a three out of the wild card? Is a move like this enough to make it interesting, at least? I know Charlie would like that. Charlie has a future on the Angels to make the playoffs. Yeah. I, let me just say this first off is that, yes, I know every baseball head and, and all the smart people out there are going to say, this is really dumb. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you mortgaging your, mortgaging your future? You have a generational talent who's not going to resign with you. So I love that the owner is basically just like, yeah, why not? Let's just go for it. Like, we'll worry about what happens next year, the year after that. Like, he's not resigning. If we make the playoffs, that'd be outstanding. And, yep. you know, maybe there's a chance, like uh, maybe a hint of a chance that he maybe thinks about coming back, which yeah, I know he's not going to. But okay. I mean, why? I mean, you have if you have Shoya Tan, he's not resigning. Like, why not? Just if, if you're not going to trade him, you might as well go all in. Trade deadline Tuesday next week, and the Angels made a move to buy. And Otani even said after his gem, or maybe it was after the second game of the doubleheader, it may have been in between games, that he wasn't expecting to be traded anyway. So he kind of buried that thought, regardless of what they did in acquiring Giolito. So those are our underdog picks for... Oh, no, wait, wait a second. Sorry, that's BJ's underdog pick. Charlie's got one. It's the first game on the slate tonight. Tigers visiting the Marlins, and you like the Tigers. I do, and BJ likes the Marlins over the first five, so it's a little head-to-head action here. But I am on the Tigers, the full game. Reese Olsen, another one of DeBundo's boys, uh, taking the mound. He He's very interesting. You look at his numbers across the board, and he gives up. Uh, he has about a, one and a half home runs per nine and a high barrel rate. That's been his biggest issue when he's come to the majors. But his peripherals are pretty impressive. He's got a 388 XFIP compared to a 450 ERA. His X ERA right around that 460 mark. But he's got elite control, has a 
above average chase rate and strikeout rate that's been coming along as of late, especially as a as a starter. He's been working out of the pen or as a starter uh, in long relief. So, but he's about league average in, in just about all the major categories: hard hit rate, expected batting average, whiff rate, and Braxton Garrett, uh, another one of those guys that elite walks doesn't doesn't give free passes and, and generates a lot of chases but his biggest issue is that he gives up a lot of hard hits his average exit velocity uh right around 91 and a half miles an hour that's up you know two and a half from the last couple of years and and his hard hit rate is near 50 percent this season so listen it's the tigers the tigers offense is abysmal they just played a double header uh yesterday and i think they scored you know four runs in those two games but I think these pitchers are about comparable and Olsen might even have the slight edge here. And, and the biggest thing for me over the double header was that you would think that their bullpen usage would be deteriorated, but they didn't use any of their high leverage arms because they were losing and the game was over and out of reach by the time the starting pitchers left the game. So they threw, uh, you know, a long reliever in the first game that pitched, I believe is like four or five innings and just they just threw them out there to get shelled and then the they threw in their back end guy or their front end guys just to get the job done and get out of uh that that series with los angeles so yeah I, I i like the tigers over the the full game here plus 140 i'd back it down to 125 uh you know shop around um but i olsen i olsen is one of those guys that i'm looking to buy and i think he's gonna bounce back from his last start you are correct. Just four runs over the two games. I thought Lorenzen was actually pretty good in the first game, but, uh, you know, when you face Otani, best of luck. Transition nicely, though, uh, DJ, because as mm-hmm. Charlie said, you like the Marlins over the first five, and you are backing Braxton Garrett, who has lost, or the Marlins have lost his last two starts, and a couple home runs allowed to the Rockies, was knocked around against the Orioles. Why are you on Garrett and the Marlins in the first five? Well, I think we're all ignoring that the Tigers, uh, like kind of like Charlie said, are a horrific offense, especially against left-handed pitching, bottom half of Major League Baseball. And the thing about Garrett, you know, his main two pitches are a sinker and a slider. And the slider's been actually really, really effective this season. 43% whiff rate. The Tigers cannot hit sinkers. They cannot hit fastballs. And they cannot hit sliders. The only two pitches they can hit are cutters and curveballs. So I think it's a pretty decent matchup here for Garrett. I do project the Marlins at minus 172 for the first five innings. It's me against the world. If you look in the app, everybody else is on the Tigers, and that's okay. I'll be happy to be the one that loses and let everybody else win. But it's a decent projection edge here for me for the Marlins, who I think are have advantages pretty much uh, you know, here in the starting pitching matchup and offensively for that. How's Braxton Garrett's stuff plus? I haven't looked, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Maybe maybe next time he pitches a Debundo will be on the podcast. Someone, someone he phone, can give you a someone deep phone Debundo. Someone yeah. phone Debundo. Yeah. I just I have like a pitchfork and I just want to keep, you know, <laughs> stabbing and just keep this going. It's fun. Yeah. Uh BJ, you got a couple more, then we'll get into Charlie. I, and I think Charlie Charlie can also tease his triple sevens that will be. Well, it's there. always it's always nice to defade one of uh Debundo's losers that he likes to take victory laps on, even though these pitchers are are uh, struggling. One of them is Christian Avier, who uh last season <laughs> had like one of the best stuff plus ratings in all of baseball and you know had a 2.5 expected area, but this season his stuff plus on his two pitches have come way, way down, and he is really, really struggling. Four and a half expected year. I did have a decent outing in his last one, but him up against Shane McClanahan, who you know has been a little bit up and down this season, but I like the over four and a half uh, in the first five for that between two really good offenses. Like I already mentioned, the Marlins in the first five. And then Garrett Cole against Grayson Rodriguez. Aaron Judge is supposed to be back today for the Yankees, which is obviously massive for them. I think we've beat it over the head about how bad they've been without him in the lineup. Uh, so I'm assuming that we'll see if he's fully healthy and able to produce for them. But I think it's a cheap price on the Yankees for the first five, minus 115 against Grayson Rodriguez, who is obviously this very highly touted prospect, but he's also really struggled in the majors so far. He got sent down to AAA to get his confidence back, came back up. I don't think everything's completely fixed with him going up against one of the best starting pitchers in Major League Baseball. So I like the Yankees for the first five at minus 115. Okay. Yeah, it's just barring a setback. The plan is to activate Aaron Judge for tonight's game. Yep. Sprained right big toe has been keeping him out since June 3rd. Judge actually wanted to come back for the Subway Series, but they wanted to be a little, a little more precaution. So we'll find that out, if Aaron, how Aaron Judge looks, and if that offense can get their crap together. A couple more here from Charlie before we go. Yes. Uh, no, Just a note, no triple sevens till next Monday. I took the oh, week shit. off. 
Yes, oh, okay. I took the, I took the week off from uh, props, but uh, last two. Wait, right so, hold here. on. Should I should I pretend I'm someone on Twitter who's upset? F you, Charlie. You're a freaking loser. You lose a couple weeks. Is that you? Want? Okay, I just yeah, fraudulence. Yeah, so we're yeah. we're back on the props next next week. Right. But my last two here, uh, Dodgers on the run line uh, about minus 115, 120. Bobby Miller against Brandon Williamson. Williamson is pretty atrocious. Uh, five and a half expected ERA, and he's benefited from uh, just he's just he's benefited from timely outs, and he's got a sub twenty strikeout rate. So he's been pitching the contact, but giving up a lot of barrels, but has not really been hit hard. And uh, I think it's going to happen here against the Dodgers and hit like a truck on Friday night. Uh, he's got a two forty eight BABIP, so he's been extremely lucky on those balls in play and despite them being uh, hit decently hard and I'm buying on Bobby Miller. He's got a 381 expected ERA, a 363 fit, despite his ERA being, you know, about a run higher. And over the last 30 days, you know, here's a debundo note for you over the last 30 days, those who have thrown 20 plus innings, Bobby Miller's actually fourth in stuff plus and every pitch grades out above a hundred. That's me doing my research, but you know, shout out to the of stuff plus there. I just think the Dodgers offense matches up extremely well here against Williamson. Bobby Miller, I'm buying on him in a, in a nice buy low spot here, or I guess you could say buy low. And rather than eating the juice, I would just lay the run line. I think they absolutely tear apart the Reds that have been, you know, their their offensive not has not been great as of late. They just lost two out of three to Milwaukee. And then the last one, the under nine in Seattle, Arizona. BJ talked about Logan Gilbert and how good he's been over the last 30 days. He's been top 30 in stuff. Plus he's been pretty great. And uh, Seattle's bullpen uh, over the last 30 days as well. They have the fourth best XFIP at 381, but their ERA is up around that 4243 range. So positive regression due for this bullpen that is, you know, one of the best in baseball. And I like think they shut the door on Arizona here. And Tommy Henry, you know, you look at his numbers, he doesn't strike out a lot of batters, but he does have about a 32% hard hit rate and a 43 expected ERA. So I think he's able to mitigate damage against the Seattle offense that ranks 19th in WRC plus against left-handed pitching. Not to say that, you know, he might give up three or four runs over five or six innings, but I think he's able to not get blown up, force an early bullpen from Arizona, who then just completely get, you know, deteriorated here. So I like the under nine in this game. Looking forward to Joey Votto in a big market tonight to stick it to Chris yeah. Russo, perhaps. That was a great great sound bite if you guys caught that on mlb network when russo i think it was high heat his afternoon show russo longtime host in new york i know charlie knows that i think bj <laughs> knows that too and it was Votto went dog. right it was, at chris russo it was mad, yeah, mad dog. Ass, it was mad dog. Him. yes yeah that's right i should be saying mad dog i mean people know him as mad dog more than they know him as chris russo but yeah. uh, that was phenomenal stuff from joey Votto. he's in a big market though this weekend joey you're in a big market you're in los angeles for a weekend yeah. series and uh, what was my last thought? I had one more thing. It's an important oh, one, too. Say again? It's an important one. Cincinnati's on the border of the wild card yeah. against the Dodgers, and this is a pivotal series with everyone else, the, especially with the Cubs playing as well as they have been. Charlie, I'm kind of surprised. I know Zerillo put this in the app last night. He put it in opening pitch. No Mitch Keller love today against the Phillies. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a bit nervous with Mitch Keller right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Him and Joe Ryan have been – not great since the second half has yeah it's been it's been a kind of a downward slump for them and i don't know if it's just you know they pitched so well for the first half and and now they're you know they're slowly breaking down i'm not so sure i had the twins a couple of days ago where ryan got shelled by dylan moore and his 1.150 batting average but yeah I, i'm staying away i love zach wheeler too he's like one of my yeah. favorite pitchers right now uh especially just like to bet from an outside perspective and so I'm staying away from that game yeah. altogether. All right. Joe Ryan, another one of Debundo's losers. Yeah. You also, the the Pirates also, you know, they're selling. So no Santana. So their offense is, which is already oh, yeah. a bit small. Like, can you even bet money on that offense right now? Like, I'm not so sure I can. Maybe an under or something like that, but. Yeah. Carlos Santana, again, thank you for what you did against the Padres on Wednesday. Uh, big home run, insurance run that proved to be very important. And just for the record, if we're going to just keep the Debundo thing going, no Cubs uh, home game today, 220. Uh, no, mm. no hashtag Cubs <laughs> system today. Mm. Can't ride the fence today. Mm. Poor Debundo. I love Debundo. <laughs> this 
Charlie was very, Charlie was really nice about Tabundo and BJ. You, you need to be better. You need more positive Friday in you sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try. So when you go sit on that bench that you told Charlie about and stare up in the sky, yeah. forget the betting. Think about how you can be a nicer colleague, co-host, and really everything. To I'll, try. <laughs> I'll try. I'll <laughs> try. Deb- <laughs> that, that'll do it. Debundo will be back on next week for uh, payoff pitch. Monday, Tuesday, and Friday during the season. Find Charlie and BJ in the app if they add anything else for this 15-game slate. Brendan Glasheen signing off. Thanks for tuning in to Payoff Pitch, Action Network's MLB betting podcast presented by BetMGM. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.